Chemo comes equipped with a RESTful API. Now, for those of you familiar with API work, you usually have to deal with a complex Swagger document and JSON scripting. To be honest, this makes absolutely no sense to me. So I'm gonna pop over to the user interface inside of the admin portal. So while I don't know how to write a JSON script, I certainly know how to click a button. And so here we can leverage slingshot automations within an easy to use interface that allows me to simply select and create rules for file movement, backup, ingest, whatever the case may be. We'll take a look at some of the options here. So here, this is gonna be an AWS backup. I'm simply defining a watch folder. So anything that goes into the media share in the footage folder, the Evo is gonna go ahead and check for me every one minute for new files or changes to existing files. And I can define specific file extensions or simply say star to use all files that go into that folder. Let's go to the bottom of the page and start adding tasks. So now that we know that Evo is gonna act on every file in the footage folder, Let's go ahead and tell it what to do. In this particular case, we'd like to back up to the cloud. So let's go ahead and copy. We'll just select a cloud service, enter your cloud credentials. And most important, we can limit the amount of speed used while these file copies take place. Again, and always protecting bandwidth for streaming video users within the creative department. While this automation is being used for backup, there's a myriad of different things we can do. We can add transcode tasks. We can automatically delete scratch renders based on their folder location. We can move files off to a more secure place. We can choose to move or replace existing files, all within this easy to use interface. So now we've seen how Slingshot allows us to take files living on the Evo and send them somewhere else or transcode them for delivery but maybe we wanna act on other storage within our network to set up some rules-based auto-tiering, site-to-site -site replication across multiple offices, or even build our own cloud. If we scroll down, we can come to the replication jobs section of the Slingshot interface and simply create a new job. This allows us to take any file living on the Evo server, any other storage on our network through SMB, or any cloud service like Amazon S3 and do something to it. That may be move it off to a slower tier of disk based on its age. So in this case, from the Evo, anything more than a thousand days old, off to Amazon. Or allows us to simply replicate files between multiple offices over a point-to-point -point VPN connection or through the cloud. So from this Evo to another Evo in another city. So that now all of our editors across multiple offices have access to the same high-res content and can search within the share browser as the metadata will move with the files. We can also schedule these file moves to happen at different hours of the day, non-working hours, to protect that bandwidth for those streaming clients. It's important to note that we can stack up multiple automations on the same folder or multiple tasks within the same automation. To that point, we can also deal with our automations on a more ad hoc basis. Everything we've looked at so far involves using watch folders. So anyone putting any file into a folder has permission to run that automation. We may not want that. And that's where we can leverage Slingshot's alias ability. This allows us to create job-specific automations for use within the contextual menu of the desktop application. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. In our contextual menu under Slingshot, so rather than having to act on every file in a folder, I can simply act ad hoc on individual files as they become ready for pertinent parts of the process. As I right click, we see the slingshot menu appear, and I now have a choice to send the file to Aspera, to my producer, or to S3 Backup, directly from the desktop interface. By using the slingshot buttons, there's actually two other benefits that aren't as readily apparent. Normally, if I were to drag and drop, even from one share to another, on the Evo, my workstation would be used because my local operating system, whether that be the Mac Finder or Windows Explorer, has initiated that copy. So even though I'm moving files within the same server, they've had to leave the server, come through my workstation, and back to a different workspace. By using the right-click Send To button, we leverage the high-speed backplane of the server itself 
or the backbone of our network to send files directly from the server to their location. The other thing that's nice, if you have freelancers or project workers, is this allows me to send a file to a place that I don't have permission to see. So rather than having to grant write access to my network, which also comes along with delete access, just because someone needs to deliver a file, I can simply give them a button and allow them to send a file to a separate workspace or location on my network that they don't necessarily have access to. The Evo server will have access, but it allows us to create an extra layer of security for that content for future film, unreleased commercials, large corporate work that we might not want everyone to be able to grab and delete.